Hi everyone, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. I am waiting for my scones to be done in the oven, and so I'm going to make a super quick VR while I'm waiting on them so that they don't burn and so that I can show you this really cool thing. So, uh, fellow YouTuber Piles of Things did this video like two years ago, January 2021, so it's kind of old. Um, and it's part of this little series called Not Reading the Tarot, which is basically like activities that you can do with your tarot that don't involve just reading them. And this particular activity was borrowed from the Tarot Playbook by Linda Cowles, uh, <laughs> which I do not have, uh, but I was very luck lucky that Piles of Things shared this uh, activity from that book on their YouTube channel so that I could be inspired to do it. This activity is that you pull a tarot card and then draw the world around it. And that's pretty much it. It's very, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and the idea is to be able to sort of connect with your card and see it in a, in a different context. And I gotta say that the art piece that Piles of Things made for it for the Medieval Cat Tarot, which is what they used, is so fucking cool! And I love the Medieval Cat Tarot, it's one of my favorites, and I did not anticipate the setting and the art that they ended up doing for it, so you absolutely need to go and watch that video. I will link it, of course. <laughs> and now I will go ahead and show my video. So I ended up using the Colorful Tears Tarot, which I got as an absolutely lovely holiday present <laughs> from our fellow YouTuber, Tangy Tarot. And I just, I'm like, people are so nice. <laughs> I have met so many amazing, wonderful, generous people on Tarot YouTube, and I try to be the same in my own life. And like, just everybody here is so perpetually inspiring, not only in terms of content and creativity, but in terms of their, um, just their selfhood, you know, <laughs> the way that they live their lives. So, okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll move on. I got to make sure I'm quick or the scones are going to burn. So I use the Colorful Tears Tarot, which I have had for all of like three days now, and I am still completely obsessed with it. And I ended up pulling the Justice card. And this is really interesting. It, uh, an interesting card in this deck because the majority of the rest of the deck it actually has a lot more going on. Like, the Justice card is very simple, and the rest of these feel like they have either props or a little more setting or or something. You know, the setting that you're going to get in this star, it's sort of already hinted at where you have this, you know, woven rug, ottoman stool kind of thing and a plant, and so it already kind of sets the stage as being an indoor space. And, uh, you know, this looks like it could be an art studio or maybe a cafe or a kitchen or a living room or something. But again, it's, it sort of already sets itself, but the justice card is nothing. The justice card has only this figure looking straight at the camera, a camera, whatever, looking straight at, at the reader. Um, and the guidebook is really interesting. It points out that that was very intentional, that it's really about, a sort of uh, confrontation and clarity uh, with with the truth and with truth finding that you can only get. That uh, I guess they they very specifically removed all the distractions from this, and incidentally, it just makes a very um, freeing, open possibility for drawing the world around it. So, <laughs> what I ended up drawing is this. This is the art, I shouldn't say just drawing, but this is the art piece that I did. So the way that the prompt encourages you to do is that you draw or recreate the card to a certain extent. So I've, I've drawn the, the main figure in loosely the same pose, um, kind of the same figure here, and then drawn the world or created the world around them. And this was really fun. I really liked how this turned out. I was trying not to take it too seriously. Again, inspired by piles of things and that of just trying to keep it really free form and 
um, intuitive and just not focusing too much on the outcome. And I'm really happy with the result. Um, so what I ended up doing for this, <laughs> I, how am I, get, how am I going to structure this? What I ended up doing for creating this was, uh, I first drew everything. I kind of like outlined everything and drew it on the back of this sheet of paper. And then I flipped it over and I sprayed some isopropyl alcohol on it and some water to try and get the ink that I used on the back to bleed through. And that's how I ended up getting this sort of hazy vision of the main figure. I used some other colors and it they really none of the colors worked so well in the background. So I ended up covering over that. But this one... The colors that did bleed through really well was this dark blue that I used as the outline, and then this gray is actually a bleed through from the back as well. And I don't, I don't know that I had a lot of symbolic intention when I first intended to create this. It's not like I was saying, I'm going to do this specifically to show this aspect, but I think that what I ended up doing without necessarily thinking about it or just by doing, oh, well, I, I think that I want to try out this technique because I think it'd be cool. I think in doing that, it ended up making some symbolic meaning and some symbolic intention that I almost, um, you know, it just kind of, it just kind of came about of its own accord. So this idea of, I think the idea that's expressed in this card about the very raw honesty, addressing things, uh, as they are and looking and looking for the truth in things is sort of replicated by, the transparency. <laughs> I think transparency is a really, transparency and honesty are really important aspects of, um, of justice and of understanding of the justice card in general. So that turned out pretty cool. I, how did I do the rest of this? I, um, painted this just with a, an acrylic, silvery glittery <laughs> acrylic which is pretty neat. I have some collaged bits over on the side here and down here this is a collage bit and this was made just by using a pen ink and watering it down a whole lot. I don't know how I ended up getting these kind of yellowy spots. I think that's just because some of the yellows that I used on the reverse side of the paper ended up bleeding through when I put more water on it to take up this ink. It kind of looks either like it could be a pretty cloud or like a moldy carpet. <laughs> I'm leaning towards pretty cloud. I want it to be a pretty cloud, but you know, <laughs> we'll see. You know, it is what it is. And yeah, what are some, I added this little mirror. It's just like, you know, a tiny little mirror because I think self-reflection is another really big part of justice and something that was incur uh, not encouraged, um, focused on in the guidebook for this particular justice card. And in terms of just the overall style, I, I honestly think I was just kind of motivated by what I've been reading lately. I've been reading this manga called Emma and it's sort of inspired by Jane Austen's Emma. It's like a Victorian England forbidden class romance kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> so I think I've just kind of been in that mood lately, but I think it also speaks to this idea of balance between structure and beauty of, of the structures of the building and then the lavish ornamentation that you get in the Victorian era. Um, I tried to keep that balance of having this very free form flowing, uh, organic pattern here contrasted with the very, um, you know, geometric pattern down here and having this blue background, I feel like is like a nice focus, focus. And also it's sort of a, again, referring to the idea of openness, it's a very blue sky kind of color and everything kind of converges on the um, the truth and vulnerability of the character here. And then I just ended up gluing the entire thing on the back of this 
really tough piece of cardstock just because obviously it warped a lot. You should have seen it when it was really warped. Uh, you have the wrinkles through, which I kind of like. I I like it symbolically and I think it just adds a little dimension to it, but that's obviously just from spraying it with water and with uh, isopropyl alcohol and all that sort of thing. So um, thank you so much to Piles of Things for sharing this activity. I was very happy to do it. It was super fun. And I gotta go and take my scones out of the oven. I will see you later. Bye.